Oh, hoy hoy, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the DCL Show, the show where we try to help you navigate the waters of Disney Cruise Line. I am your captain, Craig Williams, and today I am joined alongside by my co-captains, Dreams Unlimited Travel Agent, Elaine Edwards. Hi, friends. And DCLFan.com Senior Editor, Jackie Gailey. Hi, everybody. Oh, in this week's episode, we are going to be talking about Alaska. We get so many requests uh, for shows and shows and shows about Alaska, and we are happy to be talking about it today. And we are going to give you our best advice for an Alaska cruise on Disney Cruise Line. So stay tuned for that. Uh, before we start the conversation, I want to remind you this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money and you get the support of an awesome Dreams <coughs> Unlimited Travel agent. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free no obligation quote uh, this is also brought to you by our patreon supporters and if you want information on how to get exclusive content from the Diz team head over to patreon.com slash Diz unlimited oh man alaska it feels like it's been how long since we went to alaska almost two years now since uh this ragtag bunch was in alaska seeing everything that alaska offered to us uh, seeing everything vancouver offered to us i want to go back yes I miss please it. yeah i feel yeah. like we we had a pretty amazing time but it could have been even better and uh, I would love to do that again. But I feel like we also yeah. learned a lot along the way. Uh, it was not my first time traveling to Alaska. It was my second time on Disney Cruise Line and uh, third time overall. So I, I feel like I kind of mastered it by that point. But uh, Elaine and Jackie, you two were both uh, first timers to the Alaskan sailings uh, on Disney Cruise Line. So uh, yeah. I think I think we're going to kind of have a lot of good information here to share mm -hmm. with people. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, we we can maybe we'll start with more generalized tips for Alaska first and then try to save the focus on the ports until we uh, get more towards the end of the episode. So yep. uh, Elaine, why don't why don't you kick us off? Why don't, what's what's one of your best tips for Alaska? Well, the big thing, I mean, there's no way around it. Going to Alaska on a cruise is expensive. It is what it is. The cruise itself <coughs> is expensive. However, you are going to Alaska and the, you may going to go multiple times like Craig, or this may be your once in a lifetime shot. There is so much to do on land and some amazing excursion offerings again which are expensive so really 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 just if it takes you 10 years to save up just make sure that you have enough so that you can do those amazing excursions you know there are there are excursions that you can book through Disney Cruise Line you can also book some of the same or similar ones um, from outside third-party companies that they can be a little bit cheaper by doing that. There are some risks involved and we can kind of talk about that, but it's just, it is such a big deal that I really think that you really want to make sure that you budget, save up so that you can really make the most of this experience, which was kind of my whole mantra the entire time that I went on the ship because I thought, well, you know, this may be the only time. I mean, I do want to go back and I want to take my kids, but I know that I have to save up for that and it's going to take me a while to do that. And so I really went into this cruise as I am going to do everything that I possibly can that is Alaskan and I want to get out there and I want to get in nature and I want to see things and I want to eat things and I want to do things and just do as much as possible. So... Yeah, you're going to fall in love with Alaska. I've never met anyone uh, that has felt differently. I mean, I have talked to people where they're like, yeah, kids were a little bit too young for it, not quite interested in it yet. So I get that perspective of it. But I, I don't know how you can go on an Alaskan cruise and not just be enamored with it. And Elaine, I, I think 
your point is probably the best tip possible. It is expensive, but think of it as a once in a lifetime cruise. There shouldn't there shouldn't be a budget for it. Uh, in terms of the experiences that you're having when you're off the ship, you know, wait until you have enough money to do those extravagant excursions, and that's when it's time to go. Where you can worry about the budget, in my opinion, and it's one of my tips that I know uh, people who used to be on this show would always disagree with me on it, but I would never stress too much about what stateroom you're in versus, you know, whether it's an inside stateroom, an outside, you know, a ocean view stateroom or a veranda stateroom. There are going to be a lot of people tell you up and down, you can't do Alaska without a veranda stateroom. I'm here to tell you, you absolutely can do Alaska without a veranda stateroom. Uh, I, the last cruise I did, I was in an inside stateroom and you know what? Except for the couple times where we were, uh, you know, having an adult beverage where we shouldn't be carrying that around the ship, uh, we're up on deck or on some of the the sides, you know, where deck five you have the walking path that goes around with with chairs on there where you can sit and relax. Uh, if you don't have a veranda, you will still find plenty of opportunities to take in the surroundings around you. I mean, like if it's raining. You know, that could kind of put a damper on it, and that absolutely happens. But I have now done Alaska twice in an in a inside stateroom on Disney Cruise Line and one time with a uh, like a partial view window looking out towards Alaska. And I, you know, I have never been disappointed by any of my three cruises where I didn't have uh, where I didn't have that veranda. I, you know, I want to be on the top deck. Like I know Elaine and Jackie will attest. One of the best memories we have from our Alaska cruise was meeting all the characters on the top deck running back and forth. And that's the day you're going through the inside passage. That's the day that you would be sitting on your veranda <laughs> constantly looking at this stuff. Mm -hmm. So you want to probably be on the top deck anyways. So, don't stress if you if you can afford it by getting that inside stateroom or an ocean view stateroom, you are going to have a great time. Focus your money on the actual experiences that you have in port and buying the food, buying drinks, seeing incredible things. I that's that's my biggest tip I could possibly give you. I want to kind of just offshoot on that one and say I I 100% agree with Craig. Um, I was lucky enough that Jackie and I shared a veranda, and I'll tell you, neither of us were hardly ever in that room. I mean, we came back to like change for dinner, but yeah. other than that, I mean, like, and I spent a couple hours working one day, like, but other than that, we were never in that room. Um, mm -hmm. We really weren't. Now, I will say that if you are traveling, maybe you're traveling with somebody that has mobility issues and going up on that top deck would just be a little bit too much for them. Having them on a veranda really, really, really can help because they can sit on that veranda and be comfortable, be shielded, be warm be in their space and be able to see everything that they want to see. Um, and that can really help them out a lot. So yeah. that is one mm -hmm. thing to consider. If you are, I'm going to just piggyback one more tip. If you are going to have a veranda or even if you're going to get an ocean view room, I like to prefer the port side in this situation with the Disney Alaska cruises because with the way that we parked, we actually did face the actual ports. And it was so cool as we were pulling in to the ports, watching, seeing, just seeing the landscape and seeing all of the houses and all of the towns as we were pulling in. And then just like as I was getting ready for the day, I had the veranda open and I could hear like everything that was going on outside in the ports, the people getting on and off the ship. And it was just, it was so pretty and it was a lot to see. And I would rather look at that and experience that than just the ocean, which mm -hmm. I can see anytime on the ship. Yeah. So. I like the port side. 
I, I, you know, that's a good debate yeah. to have. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't think you can go I, wrong either it. way, but I do see <laughs> your point to it. But a lot of, you know, because these ports are fun. It's it, so, yeah, I get that. But like, you know, if, if we're talking like Caribbean, which we're not. I would rather just look out at the ocean. <laughs> so it was the right. ports. Well, that's that's the thing. Like, if you've only ever seen Caribbean, the Caribbean or the Bahamas, if you've only ever been to to those on Disney Cruise, you know it's the turquoise water is is gorgeous, but there's nothing like snowy Alaska mountains and seeing the towns and like, I love the houses. They're so colorful and bright. Like you were saying, you ain't, it's so cute. It's, it's cool to look at, you know, at that things that you've never seen before. It's, I mean, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty breathtaking. Yeah. Jackie, do you have a tip? Yeah. I want to hear a tip from you, Jackie. I do. I do. So my, my thing is, is that I, I feel like, even though the season is for Alaska is, um, you know, usually like May ish to August, um, or September, maybe even, um, depending on the year, but you have to plan for it to be cold. It is very, very cold. And because you want to spend so much time outside, you, you really have to bring so many layers so that you have what you need to be comfortable being outside. Um, Because the other thing too, is that it's windy. And when you are used to going to the Caribbean or the Bahamas, your cold isn't even a thing, like no matter what time of the year it is. And so if you're from a location that has more of a warmer client, like um, climate, like Florida or, you know, some of the Southern states where it doesn't ever really get super, super, super cold. Um, you're going to be cold to the bone. So you'll want long pants. You'll want light t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, sweatshirts, sweaters. Um, you might even need an additional piece of luggage for an Alaska cruise just because you really, you really have to bring a lot. Yeah, so. it's you, you get in like a kind of I call it a California swing with the weather where uh, I've I've been on an Alaska cruise where it's getting into the 80s during the day, but it's still dropping down into the upper 40s once you you know move out on the water and you're yeah. you know, you're getting a lot colder there. So really, you will be wearing shorts during the day and then at night you're still going to want to be bundled up and you know yeah. take advantage of blankets and and your coat but uh yeah you need to you need to plan for everything and you, the weather can always change so have that yeah. winter jacket have those sweatshirts have a rain jacket uh that's an important one gloves, yeah, gloves that's another yeah. one even You're, a scarf like yep. i like to put a scarf like uh, all around my you know so that it's above my nose cuz my nose gets really cold and so i well you know just Because you just, you don't want to have that to deal with. And the wind is bitter if you're um, up on the top deck at nighttime. It is, it it is cold, cold, cold. And you don't want to have to go inside just simply because you're cold. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you are, I mean, you're going to see some gorgeous things. And if you happen to be up there when the Aurora Borealis Mm -hmm you know, to see those Northern lights and you're not going to want to have to go downstairs because you're freezing. So just, just be ready for that and make sure that you're not being deceived because it's kind of spring, summer months. Um, it's, it's different up there. Yep. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. I mean, I felt, I felt warm enough during our port days where I was just wearing like jeans and long sleeve t-shirts going out in the ports and I felt fine in that. And there were time, there was a lot of times I was rolling up my sleeves cause I was getting warm cause I was walking so much, but the glacier day was the cold day. I mean, yeah. the wind is just killing you and it's yeah, wet it's too. Fierce. It could be raining. It was raining on our day. Um, and so you want that good waterproof layer and uh, you want mm-hmm. some waterproof shoes, that kind of thing. I mean, I went down to the gift shop and I had to buy like a sock hat and like mittens because I was cold. 
Um, and then there's a, yeah. we have a picture from later on in the cruise that Jackie took of me because we were going to brunch at Palo. So I had on like a nice dress, but it was still cold. So I had my sock hat on with my nice dress. So <laughs> I love that. That, that was my favorite. No, oh, I, I mean, I had to buy a sweatshirt too. I had, you know, yeah. I had plenty of warm stuff, but then I needed something that was just a little bit warmer. And, you know, yeah. even in the port days, it can change too. Like when we were at Juno, uh, Rhino and I were wearing uh, t-shirts and I think I might've had jeans on and super, super comfortable walking around uh, Juno in the day. And then we went to do the kayak excursion uh, at um, where Mendenhall Glacier is. And when we first got there, we're like, yeah, it's keep on the t-shirt. You know, we're going to be paddling. We're going to get hot. But about halfway through that excursion on the water, the clouds came in and it started getting windy and a little bit misting. And all of a sudden, you know, I was cold, but I just bared with it. And Rhino was like freezing and had his jacket on and he would have loved another two layers on. So it's like yeah. it really it's unpredictable. So just because it yeah. feels warm at one point in time. It might not always, uh, it might not always stay that way. But Jackie, you also brought up a good point when you brought up the aurora, aurora borealis. But uh, nighttime in Alaska, uh, it gets dark very, very uh, late at night for most people. You know, like ten o'clock is going to be your sunset. So, yeah, I uh, another on ship tip for you. Don't be married to the dining that you have on board and rotational dining. And uh, I know this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion for some, but I know every single night of our cruise, we were doing a reviews. So we had to sit and eat at those restaurants. But every single night, we're looking out at these spectacular sunsets through these small portholes far away, wishing that we could be out there looking at them. And instead, we were stuck inside eating where in a couple of circumstances, we ate at like, you know, six, seven o'clock before we got back on the ship. So we weren't even ready. We didn't even want dinner again. But the circumstance we were in, you know, we had to. So my best advice, don't be married to the food that you're paying for on the ship. You know, get snack at points in time, but try to eat in the ports, eat those local foods and yeah. on the ship, you know, skip dinner, enjoy the sunset, enjoy the view as you're pulling out of these ports. It is one of a kind and it could transition at night where you're dark enough and high enough. If it's the right time of year, you might be seeing those northern lights in that way. Uh, definitely do not do first dinner. I, even if you're with kids, I would just at that point, just eat at the ports. If you're eating first dinner, you are losing out on valuable time in the ports. And I, I mean, you're just stuck. You're stuck on the ship in that way. So I would say do yeah. everything you can avoid for that first seating and then choose the second seating. But, you know, don't be afraid to skip it. Don't feel obligated just because you're on a cruise and you paid for that food. Again, like we said, it's this is a throw every budget out of the way and spend money, have that budget for everything off the ship and just take it as it goes. But um, yeah. any, well, any has... more tips? Yeah. Was so I was going to, sorry, Jackie. <laughs> Should I go first? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I, so one thing I noticed immediately was the, the onboard times at the ports are a lot later than they are in the Bahamas and the Caribbean. So what Craig is saying about, you know, take advantage of the local restaurants, grab a bite to eat there, get some local food. Like that's really, um, it's easier to do there in Alaska because the onboard times are later than they, they were, you know, leaving, going to the Caribbean and the Bahamas. So they give you more time to explore. And Elaine? I was going to say the exact same thing that the onboard oh. times are like eight o'clock at night. Um, yeah. And so if you have that main dining, you've really cut out a lot of time in the ports. You've cut out your excursion options, all of that. And if you're one that like me, that you like to, after you get back to your room, you like to shower and dress for dinner. Like there was, I was really pushing it some days. And there were some days that I was like, I don't even have time to change clothes because we would get on the ship and have to immediately go to dinner. Um, and so I definitely, definitely, definitely second dining and the food in the port is just 
So good. So try to eat it if you can. I completely, completely agree with everything you said. Uh, any other tips for the on-ship experience with Alaska and Disney Cruise Line? Yes. Um, so when you get checked into your stateroom, um, if I don't think this would be an issue in the inside staterooms, but if you did have a veranda, ask your stateroom host for extra blankets. Um, because like when we were there, I slept on the couch bed. And so there was so much cold air that was coming in from the veranda. Every single night, I was like rooting through my luggage, trying to put on like every sweatshirt and every pair of socks that I could find because I was so cold. Um, and so I finally asked the stateroom attendant, I'm like, can I just have like an extra blanket? And she brought me some like really, really thick, um, like fleece blankets and that kind of thing. And that helped so much. But that like side, uh, that's close to the veranda doors really does get really, really, really cold at night. So pack some warm things to sleep in, ask for extra blankets when you get there. I have another one in the same vein as uh, the dinner conversation. And that is maybe throw a lot of your normal ideas of Disney cruise line and entertainment out the window. You know, they're, they're still going to have plenty of entertainment shows to see. Uh, they're going to run movies in the theaters and absolutely take advantage of all that stuff when possible. But uh, realize that you are not going to want to like make this your priority. I know Elaine is still going to go out of her way for bingo. Uh, that's, that's always going to happen. So she's going to be missing those humpback whales that are swimming right along the ship because she'd rather be, you know, marking off little squares on a bingo card. And that's perfectly fine. That's okay for her. Uh, but just like, don't, don't think about it in the same way. Like, Oh, you know what? There's, there's a show tonight. There's a movie. Got to go do that. Again, you're paying for the view that is around you. You're also paying for that entertainment, but you're missing what's happening outside. If you're just constantly inside the ship and like the day you're going up the inside passage and you want to meet those Disney characters in their special outfits or meet the characters in their outfits anytime. Like, Absolutely. I, I totally get that. That's that's part of the uniqueness of it. But, uh, you know, the doing some of the trivia contests, doing some of the shows that's there's always Disney cruises where you can do that. But when you're going through Alaska, that's the only time you will get to see those views that are outside. And I swear there were so many times Rhino and I would be like, OK, we're going to go down to the bar and get a drink. And that would just never happen because we'd be out on the top deck and all of a sudden you see whales coming alongside the ship that are just swimming with you the entire way or dolphins, orcas, uh, you know, eagles flying up above you. Stuff that just completely distracts you from everything that's happening inside. And I can't think of a bigger shame than missing all of that nature, missing the essence of what it's like to be in Canada and Alaska than to be like, okay, but it's a Disney cruise line ship. So, you know, I've got, I always do trivia. I always do the shows. I always want to catch a movie. Like it's, it's not the purpose of these cruises. The one exception is they will of course have a, like a, a nature expert, a naturalist on the ship to do a couple presentations absolutely recommend uh, going to see them. It, it might be on the boring side here and there for you, but that's that's part of the unique nature of Alaska. So I would consider those skip all the normal stuff that that you're used to with other Disney, you know, it, Disney sailings out there. So. No lies were told. But before I went to bingo, I went to the nature talk. It just happened <laughs> yes. to be in the same room back to back. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll, yep. You know what? That's that's acceptable. If the entertainment transitions from one to the next, that's fine. That's fine. Just he's gonna allow it. Yeah, I'll I'll allow it. I know. You know what? If you share the winnings with me, I'll never complain about you know, your bingo habits. Jackie had never done bingo before, so this was for research, so she could write an article for DCL fan. Yeah, it was fun too. I really liked it. I had a great time. 
Oh, perfect. I'm so happy for y'all with your, your bingo. Okay. Any, uh, we're going to probably wrap this up unless you have any final tips for what to expect with a Disney cruise line vacation on the ship experience. We've talked a couple times about the characters and their outfits, but let's just kind of go over that for a minute. Okay. Um, the characters in their Alaska outfits, like Mickey's in his yellow fishing trousers and his yellow hat, and Minnie's in her Eskimo outfit, and Goofy's in his ski outfit. They are only on deck on your Glacier Inside Passage Day. So if you are going to do that Glacier Tender Boat experience, there's usually two of them, like a noon and like a three o'clock, try to do the Try to book the three o'clock one if you can. That way you have time, if it's important to you, to do these character pictures because this is the only day they will be on deck. And look at the schedule. If you're looking in that Navigator app and it says that they're going to start at 10 a.m., get there at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. because of the way that they do it. They will have at the very top deck, they will start out where they have Mickey on one side of the ship on the top deck and he'll start at like 10 a.m. And there is a very long line. Then he will only stay out for 30 minutes or like 45 minutes. He'll stay out for like 45 minutes, but then Minnie is going to start on the other side at 1030. So you have to get through Mickey's line in enough time that you can get over Minnie's line before her 45 minutes are up. But then by that time, then Donald has come out on the other side to replace Mickey. So it's a back and forth ping pong experience. And if you start out at the end of the line for the very first one, you've lost it. Mm -hmm. you, you have lost it. You've only gotten one picture. And so and you're mad. Just, <laughs> if this is important to you, try to get up there like an hour early so that you could be at the front of the line. That way, for the rest of the characters, you can get through their line fast enough yeah. to get through them and see them all. And eat before you get up there, because otherwise you will not have time to eat. And woo, yeah. consider that that's what you're going to be doing for the next two and a half hours is just bouncing back and ordeal. forth. But it was totally worth it yeah. for those pictures. So worth it. And oh, to, yeah. to piggyback off that, too, uh, you know, it does start like that early. It starts at like nine o'clock. And so you want to be there very, very early for the first one. If you're anywhere within like, you know, the line will extend out where there looks like there's 100 people in line. If you're in the first half, you know, you'll probably be fine for the back and forth. But if you're right at the front, you will you will usually be in the first like three people for whatever the next character is the entire time you're doing it. Uh, have that big breakfast first thing in the morning before you go up. Uh, you're not going to be eating lunch until probably later, unless you're like lucky where you're like, okay, I got six of the characters done and you know, it, down to the last two. So I don't care if I'm more in the middle to the back of the line, I'll still be able to fit them in. Uh, then you can maybe like stop for a quick service bite, you know, grab that pizza. That's, I think that's what we all did. We just really grabbed, what we did because I was pizza. like, I have to put, I am so hungry. Yeah. And I think yeah. at that point that I stopped, I ate one piece of pizza. And I think at that point, that's when I got lapped and I got all out of sync is yeah. when we did that. It was. So I you don't want to so do too. that yeah. unless you're in that, like, if you're in the first five people to meet the characters, you have a little bit of a buffer room with that. But we were not. Uh, we were we were in the back half. Uh, eventually, we worked our way a little bit up because the rain helped us and the fact yeah. that we had uh, four of us all trying and then uh, yeah. actually five at some points, yeah, too, where five, yeah. it we... We had a structure, but we should have. We did not take our advice, and that's why we are so adamant. That's why you. We heard did. Talk we just didn't get before. there early enough. We didn't. We no. just. Early, that's yeah. the thing. I think I. I think I was in the room with Jackie, and it was like forty-five minutes before I said, "I think I'm just gonna go ahead and head that way, so that we can get in line." And so we got up there, and it was maybe like thirty, thirty-five minutes out, and the line was all the way down the ship. Yeah. And I was like, oh, "Okay, so yep. yeah, but." We made the best of it. We had a great time. And, it was so uh, fun. And they're loves. so the best cute. Ever. And, oh. and we will it's all so do special. it. so special. Yeah. We'll do it again yeah. one day. Yes, <laughs> please. We should. Want to. Yeah. We should. But 
Okay, I think that's going to wrap us up for this episode. We will have another episode talking about our top tips for Alaska, focusing on the actual ports. And so we'll recommend excursions for you, some places to eat here and there. Go over that detail so you get a better idea. So uh, thank you so much, Elaine and Jackie, for talking about the ship experience on a Disney Cruise Line Alaska vacation. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yay. This was really fun. Oh, thank you. And, <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for taking the time to listen and watch. We really do appreciate it. Uh, if you want to show your support, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel and get a free no obligation quote on an Alaskan cruise today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And if you want to support us and get exclusive content, patreon.com slash disunlimited. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up and leave comments, questions, video suggestions, <laughs> in the comment section and if you're listening to this subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and if you can leave us you know good ratings and reviews when possible please do so but that's going to do it for this week's sailing of the dcl show we'll see you real soon when we're back with another episode of the dcl show but until then remember you can only get to castaway key on a disney cruise